Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. Thanks so much for joining me. All right. Our reading for today is Job chapters 36, 37, and 38. We're nearing the end of our journey through the book of Job. Already uh, two books down as we've uh, begun this two-year journey through the Bible. So the next three weeks after this, we'll be working our way through the book of Exodus. Verse 14 of chapter 37. Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. As I mentioned, uh, today's reading is Job chapters 36 through 38, but I'm going to focus on chapters 36 and 37, which is Elihu's final speech or message to Job. Then in chapter 38, God breaks in and responds to this debate that has been going on between Job and these men. And so we'll see that God has the final word. Now remember, Elihu was a a younger man who waited until all of the others, the other three friends of Job, had spoken, and then he offered this counsel to God. Now, I find it interesting that Job responded to each of the messages of his three older friends, and they went, uh, you know, like three rounds. And, you know, they accused Job of being a sinner. Now, the, the evidence that they suggested that they put forth is that God's punishing hand was upon Job. You know, But here we see that Job is silent to uh, Elihu. When when Elihu speaks, Job does not say anything. Why is that? Well, Elihu actually spoke more than the others. There was actually four rounds here. Job did not respond. If our goal, like that of Elihu, is to be an advocate and help those who are facing trials and tribulation, then I think we can gain tremendous insight from this young man's approach. And I think that's why Job didn't respond. He wasn't made defensive. So this approach will prompt those who truly know God not to become defensive, but to quietly consider, which will prepare their hearts to encounter God, as Job does at the conclusion of this book. So I think there's something to be learned here from Elihu. Verse 1 of chapter 36, Elihu also responded and said, Bear with me a little, and I will show you that there are yet words to speak on God's behalf. Now remember, this is his fourth message. Now don't miss this. Elihu sounds in this kind of presumptuous. But what it appears he is saying is that he was not rolling out his opinion or his commentary on the matter. And I think that's important. Because you and I don't need to give our opinions. You know, my opinion really doesn't matter. It's the Word of God that matters. He was speaking from the revelation of God and His truth. What Elihu has been saying in the words that he shared with Job, unlike Job's other friends, is that the affliction uh, that Job is experiencing is the refining forces of God. And their continuance is not, as his older friends asserted, that because Job is wicked, or evil, but it's to bring Job to a place of total yielded, yieldedness and humility before God. Verse 3, I will fetch my knowledge from afar. What does that mean? This is not within me. I'm bringing it from God. I will ascribe righteousness to my Maker, for truly my words are not false. One who is perfect in knowledge is with you. Behold, God is mighty, but despises no one. He is mighty in strength of understanding. Remember, he is speaking by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He is not acting in arrogance and pride, but rather pointing to the definer of truth, the, the, the one who, is, who defines truth because he is the essence of truth, and that is God. God is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. God is truth. He does not, verse 6, he does not preserve the life of the wicked, but gives justice to the oppressed. He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous, but they are on the throne with kings. For he has seated them forever, and they are exalted. And if they are bound in fetters, held in the cords of affliction, then he tells them their work and their transgressions, that they have acted defiantly. He also opens their ears to instruction and commands that they turn from iniquity. See, God, God's purpose in chastising his children is not to punish them, but to refine them, to bring them along, to strengthen them. If they 
obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart store up wrath. They do not cry for help when he binds them. They die in youth and, in, and their life ends among the perverted persons. Now, th this term perverted persons is one that we'll see elsewhere. This is sexual perversion. He says, those that do not call out to God, they, go, they continue down this path of destruction. Verse 15, he delivers the poor in their affliction and opens their ears in oppression. Now, Elihu points here to the character of God. And here's something you need to know, that God always acts according to his character. And this is God's character. Verse 16, indeed, he would have brought you out of dire distress into a broad place where there is no restraint, and what is set on your table would be full of richness. But you are filled with the judgment do the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you. Because there is wrath, beware lest he take you away with one blow, for a large ransom would not help you to avoid it. Now he continues over into chapter 37. Let's go to verse 14 of chapter 37. Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. So Elihu speaks of the general revelation of God here. In fact, we're going to see this next time as God does the same thing as he speaks to Job. This is why man is without excuse. Creation itself speaks to the existence and the power of the Creator. One that we should bow before and serve, as Paul writes in, in Romans. What will silence the heart of those who desire to know God, those who desire to know God, those who truly want to walk with Him? Remember what the Scripture says, if you seek Him, you will find Him, he says. For those that desire to know and walk with God, what will get their attention is the Word of God and the work of God. Okay, It is not our rhetorical skills or the wisdom and philosophies of men that will win people over. It is the Word of God. You know, it's not even our opinion. You know, and, and I know, you know, there's a lot of folks, especially in this age of social media, that are putting their opinions out there. It's the Word of God. The Word of God has to be the foundation for everything that we do, and we should be sharing the Word of God. Job was silenced not by Elihu's age, his experience, or his prominence in society, or the title he bore. All, right? all of the other three friends who had all the wisdom and the age and the stature, Job was defensive and he responded. But here, Elihu, the youngest, Job is silenced by the wisdom that was found in Elihu because it was the revelation of God. It was God's word. It was the truth of God. You and I need to stand on the truth. Father, thank you for your word, and, and Lord, just amazing insight from your word, and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We pray and continue to ask the Holy Spirit would lead us on this journey to understand your word and its application to our lives and the world in which we live. May we stand firm upon your word. Lord, may it be your word that we desire and that we look to. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks so much for joining me this morning, and again, let me remind you, those in the uh, Area of uh, Baton Rouge will be at our Baton Rouge facility this Saturday for our monthly Stand on the Word in-person Bible study. And um, you can find out more. You can join us 6.30 Saturday evening at our Faith and Freedom Chapel in Baton Rouge. To find out more, just email me, Tony at TonyPerkins.com. Until next time, keep standing on the Word.